Right guys, so we're going to go through exercise 12c question 1 to 6 in full just to make sure that you know how to answer all of these questions. Um, I will do the last few questions of exercise 12b on a different video. I've had a look through and most people manage the first 5-6 questions really easily. So I am just going to do the last questions off of that one. I don't think you need to listen to me tell you how you got your own answers. Um, but if we look at this one, we're we've got three vectors a b and c we want to show that oa is equal to ob and more importantly that the length of oa is equal to the length of ob now these are the position vectors okay relative to the origin so oa means that you're going from the origin to point a now since the origin is zero 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 when you're going between two points you just do this point subtract this one well, if I'm subtracting 0, 0, 0 from here, I'm not going to change anything. So OA is just uh, 1 minus 4, 8 that we had at the top there. So if we're going to do the length, the length of OA is just to do the square root of the OA term. So uh, 1 squared plus minus 4 squared plus 8 squared. If you type that into a calculator, you're going to get an answer of... I promise I can count nine. Okay, and then if you do OB, and this is a show that question, so you would need to show these steps as a few people just wrote nine. Okay, OB is then four squared, add four squared, add seven squared. Again, you've got 16, 16, and 49. That's 32 and 49. You're getting 81. Square root of 81 is nine. So you can put, therefore, uh, the length of OA is equal to the length of OB or the magnitude, if that's the way you want to say. Okay, that's it. Part That's A part one done. A part two takes a little bit of work first. We're trying to show that AC is equal to BC, the length again. So first thing we need to do is actually work out what AC is and what BC is. So AC, remember, is C minus A. Okay, 10 minus 1 is 9, 0, add 4 is going to give us 4, 30, subtract 8 is 22. And then if we find BC as well, BC is then C minus B and B is 4, 4, 7. So I've got 10 minus 4 is 6, 0 minus 4 is minus 4, 30 minus 7 is 23. And so if I want the length, of AC, you're going to do the square root of 9 squared, add 4 squared, add 22 squared. You're going to get the square root of 581. Now that is not going to give you a nice decimal. Don't turn them into decimals. Leave it as the square root of 581. Okay, that's perfectly acceptable. Okay, and then if we do BC, you've got the square root of 6 squared add. Now, technically, I'm doing minus 4 squared. Uh, obviously, that's the same as 4 squared anyway, plus 23 squared. And if you type that into a calculator, I'm going to get exactly the same answer. Okay, they're the same length, so you need your statement. Therefore, the magnitude of AC is equal to the magnitude of BC. Hopefully, that's nice and easy for the first ones. So if you think about it, for part B, you're describing a quadrilateral OACB. Now, you know that o, um, o to A and O to B are the same length. And if we're doing OACB, what you've ended up with, OACB. Is that we know that O to A is 9 and O to B is 9. So this length and this length are the same. We then know that A to C and B to C are also the same length. Which means what you've actually got, if you drew this a bit more accurately, is you'd actually have a kite. Because you've got a four-sided shape where two lengths are the same and two lengths are the same. And it's the adjacent sides that are the same. So this is a kite. And then 
if we look at question two, you'll have to bear with us a second. I'm just writing them out as we go along. So question two, you've got A, B and C this time. A is the coordinate two, one, five. B is the coordinate four, four, three. And C is the coordinate two, seven, five. We want to show that A, B, C is isosceles. So if we're saying A, B, C is isosceles, I need the lengths of A, B, B, C and A, C. And I want to show that two of those sides are the same length. So we're first of all going to work out what all three are. So A, B. Now remember this is a coordinate, which means the vector O, A, or the position vector of A, is just going from the origin to that coordinate. So again, it's still just going to be 2, 1, 5. For B, it's going to be 4, 4, 3. And for C, it's going to be 2, 7, 5. So if I want A, B, I want B minus A, so that's 4, 4, 3, subtract 2, 1, 5. That's going to give us uh, 2, 3, minus 2, which means our length of A, B is the square root of 2 squared, 3 squared, and minus 2 squared. That's going to give us 4, 8, and 9. I've got root 17. If I then do, so I know A to B is root 17. If I then do B to C, B to C is just C minus B. So C is 2, 7, 5. B is 4, 4, 3. Uh, 2 subtract 4 is minus 2. 7 subtract 4 is 3. 5 subtract 3 is 2. So that means B, C is the square root of minus 2 squared plus 3 squared, plus 2 squared, that's obviously going to give you root 17 again, so I know that's my two sides that are the same length, but because it's asked you to prove that it's isosceles, you do still need to do the third side to show that that answer should come out different to these two. So if we then find AC, that is 2, 7, 5, subtract 2, 1, 5, that gives us 0, 6, 0. So AC is the square root of 0 squared, 6 squared, and 0 squared. You get square root of 36, we get 6. And you have to state, uh, therefore, AB is equal to BC. Um, hence, uh, an isosceles. Triangle. Sorry, it's the one word I can't spell without saying it left. Okay, so you get, um, because two sides are the same length, I know it's an isosceles triangle. Uh, what have we got next? Find the area <clears throat> sorry, of the triangle ABC. Now, if we want to find the area of a triangle, a uh, couple of different ways you could do it, but the easiest way is because this is an isosceles triangle, and I know those two lengths are the same, that means these two angles have to be the same and it means that I can cut this straight down the middle there to give me a right angle triangle where I know the base is 3 and the diagonal is root 17 which means I can find the other side using Pythagoras which is nice and easy and then I've got base times height and half it. So if we think about one part B, if I think about the triangle I've got a base of 3, a diagonal of root 17. I want this side using Pythagoras. So I've got the square root of the longest side squared minus the shorter side squared. Well, square root of 17, all squared is just 17. Minus 9 is going to give us 8. So I've got root 8 is the height of my triangle. So then if I go back to the original triangle, I know that the actual height is root 8. And I know that the full base is 6. So if I want the area, I just want base times height and half it. So if the base is 6, I've got 6 root 8 over 2. I end up with 3 root 8. You might be asked to simplify that because obviously root 8 is a third that could be simplified. In which case root 8 is 2 root 2. So 3 times 2 root 2 is 6 root 2. Okay, so root 8 is root 4 times root 2, in case we've forgotten about simplifying sets, so you get 2 root 2, 
which if I times by three, good job I wrote that, is six root two. Okay, and there's my area. Right, what have we got next? We've got part C. Uh, find a point D such that ABCD is a parallelogram. So we know if I go from A, B, C, D is my parallelogram. So I know that if this is a parallelogram, this length and this length have to be the same. This length and this length have to be the same. Now remember, we've got the coordinates of these three points and we know the, what is essentially the position vector from O to A, from O to B, from O to C. Okay, so I can get from the origin to any one of these points. If I then want to get to this point, I'm going to have to go through one of those points. So what I could do is I could go, since we already know B to C, if I go from O to A first and then add on the same length as B to C. So to get from O to D, we're going to do O to A and then add on A to D, which is actually the same as B to C. So O to A, we already know, is getting from the origin to the point A. Well, the point A is 215. And B, C, we actually worked out in part A to be minus 2, 3, 2. In which case, I get 2 minus 2 is 0. 1 add 3 is 4. 5 add 2 is 7. So that is an option for what point D could be that would make this a parallelogram. 0, 4, 7. Right, if we look at question three, this is going to be a longer video than I anticipated, sorry guys. So question three, the points A, B, C and D, you've got A is 7, 12, minus 1, B is 11, 2, minus 9, my handwriting is getting worse, uh, C is 14, minus 14 and 3, and then D is 8, 1, 15. We want to show that AB and CD are parallel. Okay, so if we're going to find AB, AB is obviously B minus A, so I've got 11, 2, minus 9, subtract 7, 12, minus 1. I get 11 subtract 7 is 4, 2 subtract 12 is minus 10, minus 9, add 1 is minus 8. And what was I doing that with? A, B and C, D. So C, D is D subtract C. In which case, 8 subtract 14 is minus 6. 1 add 14 is 15. And 15 subtract 3 is 12. And what are we trying to do? We are proving... That they are parallel and find the ratio AB to CD in its simplest form. So all I need to think about is what do I have to do to these numbers to make them into these ones? Well, one and a half lots of each of these is going to give me these. So one and a half of four is six. One and a half lots is 15. One and a half lots is 12. But because obviously the signs have changed, it's minus one and a half lots. In which case, um, CD... Is equal to minus 3 over 2 lots of AB therefore CD uh, and AB are parallel okay hopefully that first part makes sense right guys uh, next part said what were we on? That was part B. Which one's that part B? Sorry, that was part A. Part B says, hence describe the quadrilateral A, B, C, D. So again, if you've got A, B, C and D, we know that uh, A, B and C, D are parallel. So first of all, my diagram's not very good, but I know A, B and C, D are parallel lines. I know that uh, CD and AB are different lengths so if you've got different length parallel lines the shape that you've created is a trapezium okay so anytime you want to prove a trapezium all you need to prove is that you have two parallel lines and that they are different lengths in which case you have to have a trapezium 
Right, question four. We've got, given that, uh, 3AB plus B, I plus J, A, C, K equals 7I minus B plus 4K. Uh, find the values of A, B and C. All you're going to do is basically equate coefficients. So if we look, for example, at the I terms, I know 3A plus B has to equal 7. If I look at the J terms, I know 1 has to equal minus B. And for the K terms, we know A, C has to equal 4. Okay, that is just looking at what I terms have I got this side, what have I got this side, what J terms, what K terms have we got. In which case, this one's nice and easy to solve in the middle, B equals minus 1. Now that I've got that one, I can substitute it into here. So I know 3A minus 1 equals 7. So 3A equals 8, in which case A equals 8 thirds. And then all we're going to do is chuck that number into here. So I know 8 thirds of C is equal to 4. So I know 8C equals 12, in which case C is 12 eighths or 3 of 2. That was a really bad maths at that point. Okay, um, so that is part B. Sorry guys, just got interrupted there. Where were we up to? So uh, we've done... Question four. Okay, so question five. Uh, this one I now cause quite a few issues for a lot of people. So for question five, what you've got is point A is 10 and minus 23 and positive 10. I'm just going to write it this way. It just makes it a little bit less in terms of writing. And um, point B is P 14 and minus 22. And what we're trying to do uh, given that OAB is isosceles, so again, we've got a triangle OAB, we know O is obviously 0, 0, 0, we know A is the one I've just written down, and we know B is P1422. Now, we're trying to come up with three possible positions of point B. So, you just need to think of different uh, lines that could be... Uh, the same length because for an isosceles triangle you need two sides to be the same easiest ones to find the length are this side because that's a fixed position we know it definitely so i can work out that length there which is nice and easy so oa is obviously a subtract o but then since you're subtracting zero 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 it's just this one uh, and i'm doing the length of that line so i'm doing the square root of 10 squared plus minus 23 squared plus 10 squared And we get 27, that's nice. Okay, in which case I know that length there is 27. So if I think about an isosceles triangle, either this length or this length needs to be 27. So an easy one to find would be assuming that this length here can be 27 and creating this as our two um, equal sides. So I know that that distance there has to be 27. So OB would be the square root of, and again, this take away zero just means you're basically using the letters from P. P squared plus 14 squared plus 22 squared has to equal 27. So that means I know that uh, P squared plus 14 squared plus 22 squared has to equal 5. That's going out the window there again. Uh, has to equal 700. I'm just going to check that. My maths is going out the window. Uh, 729, yep. In which case, all I need to do is if I subtract 14 squared and subtract 22 squared, I get P squared equals 49, that was nice of them. In which case, P equals plus or minus 7. So there's two values that P could take. Now the last one, okay, is you just need to think of the other ways around, basically, that you could turn your isosceles triangle. Now, you could find this length here and hope that that length is 27. Um, or you could, yeah, that one's a fixed one. So the other one is if this line here 
um, is 27 which if you try it and that's why I'm not going to do this on this video it doesn't quite work out so what you can do instead is assume actually that 27 is the odd length out okay now if 27 is the odd length out all we need to show is that this line and this line are the same length okay so to do that and have we got my paper I'm just going to cover up the last one so I'm going to now assume that this length and this length have to be the same size and this one is your odd one out. In which case, what I can do is the length from O to B is obviously P squared, 14 squared and 22 squared, all square rooted. And I know that has to be the length between there and there. So I know the square root of, and if I'm going from there to there, I'm just doing one take away the other. So I've got P take away 10 all squared I've got 14 take away minus 23 all squared so that's a plus and then I've got 22 minus 10 all squared okay so that I've just done that in one step that's the same as finding um, a B as a vector which would give you these as your points and then squaring them and square root to get the length obviously since both sides are square rooted I can just ignore that so I'm just going to tidy everything up P squared, if I've got 14 squared add 22 squared, that is going to give me 680. Equals, now if I expand this bracket, which is P minus 10 times P minus 10, I've got P squared minus 20, P plus 100. Equals, and then I'm just going to type all of that bit into a calculator. So we've got 14 uh, plus 23 all squared. And then 22 minus 10 all squared, I get 1513. Uh, right guys, so I spotted one mistake, um, that's a minus 22, not a plus 22, so that would be minus 22, which means this number is going to change, sorry about that guys, so I get um, 37 and 22, 32, so 2393, three, that looks more like it. And I like the fact that I've got two equals. Okay, so I've got P squared plus 680 has to equal P squared minus 20P plus 2,493. So if I subtract P squared from both sides, I get 680 is equal to minus 20P plus 2,493. So I can get 20P by adding that to that side and if I subtract 680 that is going to leave me with 1813 and then if I divide by 20 that's not going to go nicely so the other one is a bit of a horrible number but that would be my third option for P okay and now question six I'm just going to start on a new page so Question six has got a lot of marks. So we've got given that a b is equal to seven i minus j plus two k and b c is minus i plus five k and we've got our triangle a b c. We want to find the area of the triangle. Now to find the area of the triangle, either I need a base and a height or I need to be able to do a half AB sine C. Now I can do a half AB sine C if I find the three side lengths here. Okay, so I know uh, A to B is nice and easy to find a side length. I've just got the square root of 7 squared minus 1 squared and 2 squared. Uh, 49, 50, 54. And then BC, I can find the length of nice and easy. That is just minus 1 squared, add 5 squared, so I've got root 26. Okay, so I know from there to there is root 54. I know from there to there is root 26. So 
what you can do is then if I can find from B to C, I can work out, um, I've then got three side lengths and I can go for cosine rule from GCSE. Remember, this is quite a few steps because it is worth seven marks. So B to C, if we think about what we've got, well, A to B was found by doing B subtract A. So I'm going to label B as X, Y, Z. Okay, so I can say that X, Y, Z subtract uh, 7 minus 1, 2. Right, so I uh, have no idea why I wrote that one. Um, and the fact that I wrote root 26 there. So, uh, what have we got? We've got A to B and we've got B to C as vectors. So, if I want my missing side, A to C, all I want to do is A to B plus B to C. So, A to B is just 7 minus 1, 2. And B to C is minus 1, 0, 5. Just be careful of that because that was I, J, K. Okay, uh, 7 minus 1 is 6, minus 1 adds 0, and 2 add 5 is 7, in which case I can find, I'm going to put this back up here now, the length of A to C is the root of 6 squared, 1 squared, and 7 squared. Gives us root 86. So what I've now got is that side there is square root of 86. So I've now got a triangle where I have the three sides. So I'm going to redraw that on a piece of paper. In fact, now what I can do is just cover up and carry on from there. Uh, so I've got the three sides of my triangle. All I'm going to do is I need to know one of my angles to be able to use a half AB sine C to find the area. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to pick that I'm going to find, in fact, so we can stick to the lettering, we'll find that one. Okay, so I know that from GCSE, cos A is equal to B squared plus C squared minus A squared over 2BC. So all we're going to do is, since this is already A, I know this side is A, this is B, so this side's B, and this is C. And we're just going to chuck all our numbers in. So I get uh, root 86, all squared, is obviously just 86. Root 54, all squared, is just 54. Minus root 26 squared is 26 over 2 root uh, B and C. So 86 root 54. And then that is what your cos A equals. So to get A, remember you're doing cos to the minus 1 of that. So you can just do that all in one go. Cos to the minus 1 of 86, 54, 26 and 2 root 86 root. 54. Okay, you get an angle of 33.2 degrees. And then now that I know the angle, just remember in terms of your triangle, uh, that one is 33.2. This side is root 54. This side is root 86. When you come to find the area, it's a half AB sine C. So it's a half times the two sides that make up the angle. So root 54 times root 86 times sine of 33.2, which if you use the correct button on your calculator, you should be able to use the exact value. So I've got a half times root 54 times root 86 times sine of my last answer gives us 18.7. Uh, to one decimal place okay and then part B says the point D is such that AD is equal to 3AB and the point E is such that AE is equal to 3AC find the area of triangle ADE so back to our little triangle A uh, B, C. So A to D is three lots of A to B. So I'm going to go one, two, three, essentially. That was supposed to be a nice straight line. And that point there is going to be D. 
I've then got uh, A to E is three lots of A to C. Okay, we want to find the area of triangle A, D, E. Well, since this is going to be a similar triangle, since the lengths have just been multiplied by 3, I know that the length scale factor is 3. So from GCSE, our area scale factor is obviously 3 squared, in which case all I'm going to do is 18.7 times 3 squared. You get 168.1 as the area of the bigger triangle. And that's it, that's all of the questions from today. I know that was a very long video guys, thank you for bearing with us, but again, give these another go in a few weeks time, you don't wanna be forgetting any of this. Okay, I know it's not the easiest of things, vectors, it always throws people, okay? But once you've wrapped your head around it, it should be fine, you just need to keep practicing. Okay, so I'd advise leaving it a little while and making sure you go back through this exercise, but we are going to do more practice today as well.